Second Epistle of John, we are at verse number 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. And we've gone into the study of rewards of the judgment seat of Christ. And we pick up now number 42 of our lesson. The fifth crown. The last crown. Go back and get the lessons we have on Second John to pick up the four of the crowns, what we've learned about the, ju the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, won't do a review. We'll just pick right into it because there's video and there's audio. The crown of righteousness. Now here, for the Christian, is the easiest crown you can get. But it will be and has been loss that we receive a full reward we looked at there is a possibility of losing your rewards this crown will be and has been lost by many do you love the appearing if anything would would you want to see the Lord Jesus Christ right now if you were to get that magic genie and rub the lamp and get three wishes, what would be your wishes? What would be the first one? If it's not to come into the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, if, if dad is, is lost and going to hell and you've witnessed to him, you've done all you can. Look at Titus chapter 2, verse 13. As far as the... Listen, I know we're supposed to witness. I know we're supposed to pray for our loved ones. But as far as myself, being a born-again Christian, I'm sorry that this thing is seen so dark. dark. Right here. Give me. For our Christian, for me, Titus 2.13, which is my life verse, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior. Let me try to guess. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, let's go over to Hebrews. 13. These verses are not in the book. I'm studying, but God shows me new things with His Scripture. Scripture is third Scripture. Hebrews 13. We reread. Excuse me. Hebrews 12. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We are to look to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are never to mind sports events, any events, marriage, birth, holiday, gift, vacation. The question comes down to, do you want to see the Lord Jesus Christ? That is the crown of rejoicing. Demas fell away. He went back to Thessalonica. He, he gave up looking for Jesus. He will not get the crown of righteousness. Above all things, people, places, do you still want to see Jesus? And it doesn't have to be the rapture. It could be that you could die your last breath and in your mindset, you want the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to see Him. You want to please Him. Who do you want to see the most? Again, I apologize. This screen looks like it's just getting darker and darker. What would be your first wish if you were granted three wishes? Listen, 
I was saved in April 1987. The first person I witnessed to was my dad. I have been witnessing to my dad since April 1987. I was saved on a Saturday. I went to church Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. I went witnessing to my dad. My dad has not ever received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And he's going to die. He's going to hell. But I want to see Jesus Christ. You've got to give up on sports. You've got to give up on the events. You gotta give up on marriage. You gotta give up on birth, holidays, gifts, and vacations, everything but Jesus Christ. I don't I don't care. I don't care my wanting Jesus Christ to come and get in the crown of righteousness and interfere with what you have. The heck with what you got. It'll burn up wood, hay, or stubble. Don't have me lose the crown of righteousness because you got something more important. The more important in my life is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the more important. Now let's pick up 2 Timothy 4, 1. 2 Timothy 4, 1. I'm praying for the rapture. And I don't care what you have. 2 Timothy 4, 1 is Paul's farewell. Last word. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we saw in Titus 2.13. Who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Jesus is coming. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. No, it's not opinions and likes. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Oh boy, we are in that age today. But after their own lusts shall they heat to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth. Oh boy, that's today. And shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, enduring afflictions, do the work of the evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I'm like an aircraft ready to take off. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, the judgment seat of Christ, and not to me only. Here we go. But unto all them that love his appearance. I believe when the rapture happens, there are going to be some Christians out there, they're going to hang on to their who, what, where, why, what, person, place, or thing. They're not going to want to go. It's the big ball game. It's the big promotion. It's the family event. Anything but Jesus. And there is no crown of righteousness. Is you got to love his appearing. Loving his appearing is right now. If anything would happen right now, the best thing would be the Lord came and called us all. Somebody would come break in this house and I wonder what he was taping. They'll hear about the coming of the Lord. Too late. That's what Paul said. Revelation 22 20. Revelation 22 20. Go all the way to the end of the Bible. All the way to the end. I went too far to the end. 2220. Will John get the crown of righteousness? He which testify these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. John's reply, Even so, come Lord Jesus. John was looking for the, the, the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. 4 1. Revelation 4 1. After this, I, be, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. 
and I will show these things which must be there hereafter. It's coming a day, Christian, that when God's going to call your name with a trump, you're out of here. Are you going to be pleased? Is that going to be the answer to all your prayers? Or, is, but Jesus, I'm going to miss. What did Jesus say about being a disciple? If you love not your family, if you love not your own life, you cannot be his disciple. Is there anything in your life that's more important than Jesus? Is there anything more important in someone else's life more than Jesus? It's going to interrupt all the plans and everything like that. You lost the crown of righteousness. I said this was the easiest crown to, to get. You got to want Jesus to come. And yet this is the easiest crown to lose. We're coming upon June graduation. We're going to miss my... Tough! You got a bunch of people graduating to jobs. There's no market. When the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will solve all financial... Cap and gown. What about standing before the Lord Jesus Christ and getting an eternal crown? Didn't think about that, did you? You got to give up your own self to be a disciple. First Thessalonians four thirteen. I don't like, I don't care what you don't like. I'm going to preach the truth. I don't care who I'm getting. I apologize. This screen is going dark. Get a light, another light or something. Oh, where am I going? First Thessalonians chapter First Thessalonians chapter four. I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to try to do right. I'm a sinner and I fail. But don't stand in my way. I don't want to lose anything. I don't want you to lose anything. But I would have I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep and have died. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. There are people who die and go to hell. They ain't got no hope. A person has died in the Lord, they've got hope. That they're better than you are. You're suffering. They're not suffering. You haven't seen Jesus. They've seen Jesus. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, I believe that, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them, prevent which are asleep. You're not going to stop the graveyard. You're not going to stop the rising of the, the Christians in the graveyard. You can put the cement casing. You can seal the coffin up. You can do whatever you want. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, it was impossibility for Lazarus to come forth, and yet he came forth. He was bound from head to foot. Makes you wonder if we're actually going to see the graves literally open. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. You want that? Or is your team more important to get the stupid ring or a trophy? Is that more important? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, the dead, in the clouds. The rapture, we're going to meet 
our fellow brethren, all those who have died in Christ, we're going to have a meeting in the clouds one day where there'll be no lost person. A 100% congregation of saved individuals. Now talk about a church meeting. There'll be none saved fishing that day. There'll be none saved that's going to oversleep that day. There's going to be none that on that meeting will be sick. That they can't make it. Because the dead shall rise. To meet the Lord in the air. Alright, we meet all together. The dead and alive, we meet together in the clouds. And then we go further north. And there is the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that what you want? I tell you, I'd rather see my saved family gathered together before the Lord Jesus Christ than any, anything you can offer me on this lousy, miserable person, earth. You say, well, what about those that are lost in your family? I've witnessed to them as far as I know, most of them. If not, I don't know at all. I don't know if I can say that. They've rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, not me. I'm going on. Everybody read about the Christian looking for the blessed hope? And then we read over there in Hebrews, looking to the author and finisher of our... You! Looking! See? Part of your Christian life, life is not what they are doing. What he is doing is what are you doing? That's the life that you are to lead. This crown is so easy. And yet, how many will lose? Demas gave it up. What we're not even told why. I mean they said that he loved the present evil uh, he loved the present I, I had evil. He loved the present world and went back to testing like what 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 was it that he went back to lead this crown? What could be so more important? Now we close the five crowns. Let me read you something here. Revelation nineteen twelve about the Lord Jesus Christ. The eyes were as a flame of fire. He named. Not that babe no more. He's not the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. He is a lion, a tribe of Judah. Rawr! And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. That passage says that Jesus Christ had many crowns. Now this is my own thinking. You take it as far as you want. But here I go. Peter calls Jesus Christ the shepherd and bishop. Crown of glory. Jesus Christ is the foundation and the source of every saved soul. Crown of rejoicing. Jesus finished the work set out by God, fulfilled 100% of the Old Testament, Old Testament prophecies concerning the first advent. Incorruptible crowd. He suffered Isaiah 53 and died for us and endured the temptation, the crown of life. And you know he wants to see his father above all. The crown of rejoice, uh, righteousness. And he's going to fulfill all the second advent and all the prophecies of the Bible. By the time we enter into eternity. I believe that Jesus will have all five of these crowns on his head. And I believe as the elders that we read in Revelation. As they cast their crowns before the Lord. 
Let me ask you. Now, one of these crowns is for the ministry. The office of the ministry of the, of the pastor of evangelism. So, let's lay that aside for a moment. Let's say I'm just talking to a Christian who witnesses and does right. Alright? When that time comes to worship the Lord and the crowns go before him, are you going to have one crown? Are you going to have two crowns? Three? Four? Pastor? Missionary? Evangelist? You're going to have five crowns to throw at him? To worship him? Or will you have none? When it comes time to cast in those crowns before the Lord Jesus Christ, and you reach up to your head, oh, I didn't do nothing for him. There's silence here because I want you to think about that. Once the rapture happens or death happens, you can't go back and do over. What you earn or what you lost today, that's it. If this was your last moment, if you have no crowns and you're to die or the rapture happened right now, you have no crown. And what did John write to us? The one that said, Amen, even so come Lord Jesus. He writes to us in 2 John verse 8. Look to yourselves. Remember we looked at that in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. We looked at that in Hebrews chapter 12. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought. Those crowns are, are given to you by what you have done. There is works, not in salvation, but being saved. The Savior who died and loved you enough that you will do things for him but that we receive a full reward. Now we've been stuck on this verse a long time as we went off to the judgment seat of Christ. There is so much one can lose, but again, certainly it's not your soul. And I've got to keep emphasizing that argument. You can lose rewards, but you can't lose your soul, Christian. Christians worry about the incorrect things all the time. And do not fear themselves with what ought to be attentive of. What attention should be gathered in their life. And here are some things that a Christian can lose or fail. The loss of these can make one's life miserable and make one's eternal life fruitless. If one would ponder the loss from eternal rewards from a life not serving the Lord Jesus Christ today, you've got to be faithful up to the end and the most rewarding experience, but if not, you got to read on. How did you finish the race? I ran 57 or 58 years of my life. Not good enough. If the 58th year wasn't crossing that finish line, that Lord Jesus Christ. I gave God half my life and I took half the other life for myself. And if you cross the finish line and it was not for the Lord, not looking to the Lord, You can lose the assurance of your salvation, not your salvation. You can actually believe, and there's many do, oh, I lost it. But you didn't lose it. How can you have an assurance in something that you're not living? I can go in my lockbox right now and see I have life insurance papers. I can read them. 
But if you haven't read the Bible, you haven't read the Word of God, how do you expect to get the blessings and the fruit of the Spirit if you haven't opened up the Word to check? I didn't say lose your salvation. I said the assurance. Apparently some of those things which John wrote to in his first epistle were <coughs> excuse me, stressed with disbelief about their salvation. 1 John 5.13 these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. That's one thing. You can't lose your salvation, but you can lose your assurance. John addresses that like losing your rewards. Next, you can lose your testimony or influence. There's a difference between your testimony and your reputation. Your testimony is your public profession of what you believe and what you have experienced. Your reputation has to do with your character and what people notice about you. You cannot always control what people think about you, but you can but only you can put a blemish on your testimony and your influence. Enoch had a powerful testimony regarding his walk with the Lord and a godly effect on those that were around him. Hebrews 11.5 There are people out there who say, I'm a Christian. I wish they wouldn't say that. I look at their lives. It's messed up. It's wrong. It's sin. It's not what they're supposed to be. And they look at those people and they see somebody who's, who's really trying to live it and all that. You know, well, I know a Christian. I know a pastor. I know this church. And it's always in the negative. It's always sin. And I'm sorry it's like that, but guess what? I know people like that too. And it's a shameful thing. That some choose to live for themselves and have that testimony and that influence in their life and their character. Demas had a character of being a quitter. On the other hand, Lot lost his testimony and his influence, 2 Peter 2, 7-8. Lot lived for himself, by sight and in sin. When challenged with facing the judgment of God, he tried to caution his family, but they made fun of him. Come on, the Lord said, but the angel said, we're going to get out of here. Ha, ha, la, yeah, right. God will really speak to you in your life. Look at your family life. Look at Lot's family life. His wife cared more for the world, and look what his daughters end up doing. Noah said, hey, family, get in the ark. His wife, his three sons, and his three daughter-in-laws got in the ark. Remember about being a disciple? When challenged and facing the judgment of God, he tried to warn his family again. They made fun of him. Lot's wife left Sodom with him, but Sodom under no circumstances left her, and she looked back that cost her life. Just one little look. And she did not move anymore. I don't think Damus made him, made him, ever made a move again, but the wrong way. Lot debated with the Lord about where he should go. Then finally, finally, went their way. After all, 
They told him to go to the mountain. Oh, can't I stay in this little city? It's just a little city. Not what God said. And then Lot's remaining two daughters. The relationship they had with their father. So Lot is left in a cave. Fathering two boys by his daughters. Because he loved the world. That's a shame. Most important, I have confidence that in that man can die before God's timing. And what I mean is there is a conceivable date fixed by God when your life is up. That man can and is able to move that date forward or backward. Hezekiah was, was allowed longer life, but cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, and sin can end life prematurely. Not honoring par parents in the law, Exodus 20. And Paul writing to the Ephesians can end one's life early. 2 Kings 20, verse 7, and 1 Corinthians 11, 30. You can do things that can shorten your life. The Church of Corinth is the most lascivious and sinful church in the Bible. Paul had to report one problem after another in the letters he wrote to them. One major, one major subject concern was that the way they were handling the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 11. They were creating a mockery of it by turning it into a big feast, fellowship dinner, for those who could bring much food while leaving others to starve. Some were even becoming drunk at this feast that was supposed to be the Lord's Supper. Paul confronts them with this sin and the importance of it, 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 29. He also lets them know that this is why some of them are sick and why some of them have died, 11.30. God is very protective of his ordinances and dis despises sin in his people, 1131-32. We're looking at life when a Christian, I'm going to do it my way, as some guy sang one time, when where he is. A life that I can do it my way. I don't need your help, Lord. Not all sickness and death is the outcome of sin in a person's life. Paul himself was sick most of his life in ministry and had a personal physician, Luke, who journeyed with him. However, sin is destructive and fatal if not accurately dealt with. If you cover, condone, excuse, rationalize, or justify sin, you will not succeed. Adam, it's her fault. King Saul, oh, I'm sorry the people are looking at me. W was that good enough? Judas goes to the priest, throws the coins down. There is a lesson to be learned from the Israelites and Egyptians in the Old Testament. God judged, God's judgments upon the Egyptians were plagues that repeatedly resulted in sickness and death. After their deliverance from Egypt, God made the Israelites a conditional promise concerning their health. Exodus 15.26 If you can find it, I recommend that you read the book, None of These Diseases, by Dr. S.I. McLennan. Macmillan, capital M, small c, capital M, I, L, L, E, N. That's none of these diseases. It's a good book. There are terrible consequences for living a life of, in disobedience to God and His Word. Romans 8, 13, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, 10, 10 to 11. 
There are numerous illustrations of this fact in scripture and in life. One only has to study the lives of such men as Locke, Aiken, and Samson to see what those consequences are. These men not only brought up ruin in themselves, but also upon their families and the nation. Sin is destroying America today. The suffering, the suffered great loss, both spiritually and physically. This is what John sought his readers to avoid. First John, second John. And what God wants you to avoid. God doesn't want you to sin. God wants you to do right. And one of the things that you got to do is earn that crown of righteousness and keep you from sinning is keeping your eyes upon Jesus. The first commandment in Exodus 20 is God to be first. Then no idols. Then no lying. Then no adultery. Then... What losses have you been? Okay, what losses have you by this time? The loss. I'm trying to say the losses you get by sin. We receive a full reward that you get all. Sin will turn you away from rewards. What changes are essential to be made in your life to avoid future losses? Let's see where we are. I think we're going to end right there. That feels like a good spot to. I don't know we're right in the middle of the subject, but uh, well, I'm going to end right there. I'm going to end on the note: sin in your life will cause loss. It will cause destruction. It will not do you no good. David's sin with Bathsheba cost the life of four of his sons. It caused the rebellion of one of his sons. Sin that has hit my family personally has caused an absence between me and my son for 15 years because of sin. We die, Christians die because of sin. The wages of sin is death. And before death, it causes so much misery, pain, sorrow, destruction. You know why there are hospitals and funeral homes? Because of sin. That's plain and simple. Why are there graveyards? Because of sin. Why are there tsunamis, earthquakes, death of baby? Because of sin. Why do you need a police department? An ambulance? Because of sin. Why are there alcohol anomalies and Programs that try to help people get off drugs. And people out there who truly try to help families get back together. Why are those occupations? Why are there those organizations which are good? Because of sin. How do you fail and not get in your life situation right? By denying sin. By giving another name. By blaming someone else. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought. But that we receive a full reward. What causes loss? A reward. Sin. What is the sin? 
I'm not going to do what God told me to do. I'm going to seek myself and not God. You lose the joy. They say joy Jesus first, others next, and you last. That has a point and a truth to this study. You're going to lose the last crown when you take your eyes off Jesus and want something else. You got to see that movie. And it was on a, a night that uh, you go door knocking or, or, or the street ministry or whatever you do for the Lord. And someone's soul may be damned because you wanted to go to a sports event. Or you wanted to go to a family event. You say, are those things wrong? Are you asking me? I say yes. All of it's wrong. I say yes. Well, what's the Bible say? I don't care what I say. Who cares what I say? What you want, more important than God, look to yourself. Look at everything you're doing today. Look to yourself. That we lose not those things which we have wrought. Is what you're doing. Can it cause you to lose. Your testimony. Your character. Your rewards. If it can. You need to get rid of it. Now if you can do what you do. And God can still bless you. And God can still use you. And you are still pleasing in the eyes of God. But that we receive a full reward. Anything that prevents you from earning that full reward. You got to get rid of it. Anything that gets you rewards. You got to keep it. So if it prevents you, get rid of it. If it earns you, keep. Now look at on this close here, Revelation 3.11. Look at this note. This is written to the Church of Philadelphia. 3.11. Behold, I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Hold that fast which thou hast, that we receive a full reward. Okay? That no man take thy crown. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. 311 Revelation, behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. That no man take thy crown. The crown of righteousness that we studied the last one tonight is so simple. The whole going off, going here, going there. The topic of this one is don't take your eyes off Jesus. You don't want anything more than Jesus to come. Nothing's more important than Jesus coming and calling us all home. Nothing more important. 